chugging this. What is, no, 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 you, that one's enough, one's enough, sir, thank you, no more, thank you, I don't think I can take that. That is horrible. <laughs> Alrighty, I think we're just going to wait one more minute and then we'll get started, just think. For the people in the back, there are seats here if you want. A lot of them. All righty. I think we're going to get started. So, welcome everybody. Uh, we're going to be talking about Death Star. Death Star is a Python script that I've written uh, that basically automates the process of getting you from a domain user to a, do do a domain admin in 90% of like your run in the mill Active Directory environments. Uh, we're going to be taking a technical deep dive into the misconfigurations and vulnerabilities uh, that Python, the uh, Python script exploits or abuses to do this. This is not necessarily going to be like a, just a full out tool talk. I'm not going to just sit here and talk about, you know, this 200 line Python script that just makes some RESTful API calls. But uh, we're going to be taking a tech, uh, fairly deep dive into the vulnerabilities themselves and the mitigations. And uh, we're going to go from there. So the Who Am I slide? Uh, I'm from Coalfire. I work for Coalfire Labs. Uh, they're kind enough to sponsor my trip uh, to conferences and uh, to make me work on these projects in my free time. I go by ByteBeater, that's the link to my uh, GitHub repo, and my blog. I have other projects as well, uh, which uh, I've talked about in the past. Before I begin, I just want to take the opportunity, uh, since this is a tool that automates, somewhat automates the process of Active Directory pen testing, I just want to take the opportunity for a mini rant time. I hear this a lot from pen testers, unfortunately. Uh, and consultants a little bit everywhere, and it drives me insane every time I hear it. Uh, it's sort of a pet peeve of mine. But domain admin isn't the end. This isn't the, really the end goal of a pen test, especially if you're if you're just a security best practice pen test. Like you should be focusing on post exploitation more than actually getting domain admin. I cannot count the number of times where I've read just reports from from a little bit of everywhere, and uh, they just stopped, completely stopped at getting domain admin access. If you present that report to an executive and um, you just give them a report that says, here, I got domain admin, that's it, uh, they're just going to not understand the impact that has overall. On the other hand, if you present them if, with a report that has credit card data, PII, anything, the crown jewels of the network, the impact will be obvious to them and they will actually take steps in remediating those vulnerabilities as opposed to just saying to the blue team here, I don't know what this is, go fix it please. Um, so it, it would be much more impactful if you do do that. And this is especially important in the, um, in just, in this day and, just this day and age really when it comes to pen testing because more and more, uh, there are tools that just automate the, the, auto, the complete process, uh, when it comes to pen testing or just finding uh, the uh, vulnerabilities themselves in Active Directory. So just, just really, just don't be lazy when it comes to pen tests. Like you know, just just do do your job, and I think that'll just that'll just make everyone better and safer. So um, one more thing before we begin is that this is not also going to be like it, we're not we're not going to be talking about advanced red team tradecraft here. This is uh, if you saw like the talk yesterday from the Spectre Ops guys about ACLs and backdoors or just the, getting, you know, getting that domain admin access through ACL misconfigurations, uh, this is not going to be about that. This is just going to be the average run of the mill Active Directory misconfigurations, uh, that I personally see in every environment. And that's what Death Star does. It, it uses those, those average run of the mill Active Directory misconfigurations to actually give you domain admin access. So what is it? Uh, it's a Python script. It's written in Python 3, open source. Uh, the link to it is at the bottom of the slide. Uh, but it basically just uses Empire, uh, Empire's RESTful API to be exact, to automate uh, basically get, getting you domain admin. And like I said before, I'm reading this, but this is like not, 
this is not something that's really advanced. Like the techniques here are just something, the usual things that you do with PowerView or Mimikatz, for example, they're just completely automated. And um, it's similar to what we've seen in a while with some malware, which we'll get into a bit. Why do we even need this? Well, the reason should be pretty obvious, but let's just, if you, I'm, I'm guessing, like show of hands, how many of you here are Pentas Active Directory on a regular basis? Okay, that's what I expected. So if you're, you're probably already thinking like, well, if just look at what I do on a regular basis and see that this is pretty repetitive. Like, you know, you just, usually what you, what, what happens? You acquire foothold by using some means. Uh, situational awareness, so you use PowerView, Bloodhound, whatever you prefer, or just do it through, um, built-in, uh, command line utilities. Uh, you perform some kind of domain privesque. Usually it involves like Kerberos roasting or finding group policy preference passwords, uh, in those XML files, which is what, uh, Death Star does, which we'll get into in a bit. EDUM credentials using Mimikatz, the SAM database, uh, perform lateral movement using some form of, some technique, uh, WMI, uh, the COM stuff that's come out recently, uh, whatever you prefer. And then you just repeat the process over and over and over again until you get domain admin or just maybe even not, you just find the data you're looking for and exfiltrate. So this is a really manual task and, uh, each time, I just find myself doing the same thing over and over again. And quite frankly, the client, usual, the, uh, Clients that I usually get don't have the security maturity to even, for even to me attempt like advanced red team tradecraft, like, you know, the ACL stuff that we, that I talked about. So this is just basically trying to automate those regular tasks that I do on, on a regular basis. So getting a foothold. We're going to go over this real quick, uh, just for, uh, in case maybe you haven't heard of any, uh, some of these tools, but this is the only thing that Death Star really won't do for you. Uh, for obvious reasons, because it really depends where you are. So if you're externally, if you're, if you're trying to get a foothold on an internal network externally, uh, there are a couple of ways. Ruler and Link Sniper are my go-to. Usually, um, usually people have Exchange servers or Skype for Business link servers available externally. Uh, shout out to the SensePost guys for a Ruler because it's freaking amazing. Uh, it basically abuses Outlook rules and more recently forms to give you that internal shell. Um, I won't go into detail on any of these tools because that's, that could be a talk of its own. Uh, Link Sniper, same thing as Ruler basically, only that it, it takes advantage of Skype for Business servers hosted online. Uh, it allows you to pour brute forcing against Link Server, Skype for Business servers, and it gives you access to, and if the, you find a valid set of credentials, you can just gain access to someone's uh, Skype, and you can perform like really neat social engineering attacks, or uh, gain access to the global catalog, which is sometimes very useful. Uh, if you're on, an if you're already on the internal network and you need to get a f uh, the first foothold in a uh, Windows environment, uh, you can use Responder, Impacket, Crack My Zek. Uh, Responder, Impacket. I mean, if you're not using those, uh, you're probably doing it wrong. But Responder, you know, takes advantage of those multicast broadcast protocols. Impacket, same thing. It's it's sh well, not the same thing, but it's a library that um, that basically uh, incorporates a lot of the Windows API calls, so that you can it, and it has a set of example scripts that are awesome th that you. You can use to perform lateral movement, uh, dump the SAM database. There are a bunch of, uh, and it's completely written in Python, so it's, it's awesome. Crackman with Zek is another project of mine that basically just automates, uh, performing post-exploitation tasks, and it helps with getting that initial shell on Windows, uh, on, a on large directory domains. So there, there are options of getting that initial foothold. So, I'm, I'm gonna gloss over this because quite frankly, I mean, probably, we probably, we probably are nauseated every time someone mentions this because we, we see this on almost every environment. But, uh, multicast broadcast name resolution poisoning. So, LMNR, MBNS, WPAD are the major ones. Uh, there are others, like MDNS. I personally have never seen, uh, those in a live environment yet. Uh, if any of you have seen any other protocols, uh, broadcast protocols other than this, let me know because I'm really interested in, in seeing that. Uh, this basically just the straight out allows you to grab authentication hashes off the network. And this is the, probably one of the culprits when it comes to this. That little checkbox there, the checkbox of doom, I call it, is, the, is probably the evilest thing I've ever seen in the Windows operating system. But, um, that basically tells Internet Explorer to go look for that w, that wpad, dot, that file, that pack file, uh, to download that, uh, proxy auto configuration file, uh, which you can then poison. So, how do you mitigate this? Because we, I like talking about mitigation too, um, when it in my slides, because otherwise it, it's, I, I feel, I feel weird if I don't talk about mitigation. So, uh, create a WPAD entry that points to the corporate server proxy or disable proxy auto detection in Internet Explorer. 
Uh, disable MBNS LMNR. LMNR can be disabled via group policy. Uh, MBNS is a little bit trickier because it depends on your domain functioning level. You can't, if, it, this, if your domain is at a certain domain functioning level, you can't really disable MBNS. And also, uh, older operating systems might rely on MBNS itself. But you can disable MBNS, I believe, via DHCP, uh, which I personally, uh, other people have suggested there's like PowerShell scripts out there that like to disable it. But I've personally always disabled it via DHCP. Always, t all these changes that I'm going to be mentioning through uh, going through these slides, please test in lab before deploying in production because all this stuff can break legacy systems. You're going to want to set valid DNS entries for all internal and external resources and monitor network traffic uh, for broadcast poisoning attacks. If you're familiar with Responder, if you looked at the code, uh, the code that Responder has, you can see that uh, the packets that it uh, generates can be easily, pretty easily signatured, so that's that's a pro tip in case you want to actually write rules and stuff for IDSs to detect responder network uh, traffic. Uh, difficulty, moderate, break stuff, maybe. Like this takes, you know, takes some effort uh, and it can break stuff. Uh, it can break legacy systems, it can break custom applications that rely on LMNR uh, to uh, discover hosts on the network. SMB signing. This is something that, in my opinion, is the most one, one of the most under, under uh, overrated, uh, sorry, overlooked and underrated security settings in a domain. Uh, I see a lot of like, if you just Google like top 10 security checklists for Active Directory, normally they don't mention SMB signing. SMB signing is somewhat like uh, forgotten for some reason, but I'm really trying to, uh, every time I, I talk, I really try to mention SMB signing because it's just such a critical security control. So SMB signing basically digitally signs each connection so that the server is, makes, uh, is completely sure that the connection originated from the actual host as opposed to a man in the middle. And you're going to want to enable this everywhere, which we'll talk about in a second. But you do this by uh, setting the proper registry key. You can do this via group policy. Uh, again, test the lab before deploying in all systems. Uh, this is it's pretty easy to do, but the problem is that there's, there could be additional overhead on the servers that require uh, SMB signing. And also it might break stuff like legacy applications and operating systems that uh, do not support the security setting. So the reason why I mentioned SMB signing in Responder is because this is probably the easiest way to gain a foothold in an internal environment, NTLM relaying. This is something, again, that I'm trying to sort of push because some, a lot of, every time I talk to people, there seems to be a lot of confusion about NTLM relaying. Uh, but you can actually, with the, the hashes that you get with Responder, you can actually relay those to other machines on the network if there's multicast broadcast protocols in play and uh, the, the hosts don't not, do not support SMB signing. So you can basically just use Responder, NTLM RelayX.py, which is a Python script that comes with the Impacket library, and Empire, and you can just set NTLM RelayX.py to execute a command on every successful relay, and you just get shells on each machine. Um, and it, usually I just set this up, go get, grab a coffee or orange juice, come back, and I have a foothold in the network. Uh, this can be a complete talk of its own. I thought I'd just mention this again because this is some, there's a lot of confusion around this attack, but I actually wrote a blog post about this uh, that shows you some practical operational examples in the link down there um, and just uh, tries to demystify this attack a little bit better. So, situational awareness. This is where Death Star comes into play and it also automates. This is the part where this Death Star starts automating a lot of things. So, situational awareness. Power view is the go-to when it comes to situational awareness. Uh, get net group member, get net local group, invoke user hunter. These are all the utilities that uh, you can use to gain that situational awareness. Uh, so, enumerate domain admins, enumerate local groups, see where the uh, domain admins are logged in. You don't want to uh, it also enumerate domain controllers. This also seems to be some kind. Of, there's, there's a lot of confusion when it comes to this. People, some, a lot of pen testers and consultants that I've talked about, that I've talked to, um, tend to actually target domain controllers as opposed to stay away from. I don't understand why. Because if you like, if you send an exploit to a domain controller like MS17010 and it brings down the domain controller, not only you might crash the entire network, but it's also the domain controllers are the servers that are usually the most heavily logged. So it's just I, I find it really bad form. Uh, when someone actually tries to target domain controllers as opposed to staying away th from them. Uh, the only reason why you want to go after domain controllers is to perform DC sync attacks or just dump the NTDS that did. Other than that, I think you should probably stay away from it. So, mitigation. Situational awareness is a little bit difficult uh, because a lot of the features that we're using to gain this information are a feature, not a bug, in Microsoft eyes, mostly because of backwards compatibility. 
Um, there are some TechNet uh, PowerShell scripts that I don't think a lot of people have heard about, but uh, Itai Grady, I'm hoping I'm pronouncing his name right, but he wrote a, uh, a couple of PowerShell scripts. He's from the Microsoft ATA team that basically may, uh, harden uh, Windows operating systems and cut down on the amount of information that you can get via uh, session enumeration and SAMR enumeration. So this will, uh, I, I haven't tested this, but uh, it should in theory cut down uh, a lot of the information that like Bloodhound gets, for example, or uh, Empire itself through Invoke User Hunter or PowerView uh, that you can normally get. If anyone has any pro tips on cutting down information gathering on Active Directory, please let me know. Uh, with on the cheap, preferably, because I don't believe in flashy blinky boxes. Uh, I preferably want something like, you know, in, in, in that Microsoft provides, so even if it's the third party Microsoft tool, but I do not believe in flashy blinky boxes. So if you have something on the cheap that cuts down on this information that an attacker can gather, let me know. Uh, difficulty hard, um, because it's pretty hard to cut down on this information. And it could break stuff if you do try to mess around with maybe like Active Directory objects, permissions, uh, and maybe cut uh, to my, to try to cut down the information that people can gather there. Uh, it can break stuff. So that's just something to keep in mind. Domain privilege escalation. Uh, domain privilege escalation usually comes in the form of Kerberos thing or just group policy preference, uh, files and group policy preferences. But at Death Star just tries to use the old, just the old and fashion group policy preference, passwords and group policy preference vulnerability. So quick summary of this is that basically in every XML file in the sysfall share, well, in every uh, group policy preference, where when you create a group policy object that has a username and uh, password in it, uh, the username and password gets stored in the sysfall share in an XML file. And uh, in, a C in the C password attribute, and that uh, password gets encrypted with AES-256. Problem is, in early 2012, a little bit earlier than that, uh, basically Microsoft released the, uh, the shared secret for that uh, for that uh, encrypted string. So anyone that basically can access the sysfall share can just decrypt that entry now. So this is great because every time administrators push out local accounts via group policy, uh, usually that you'll find that XML share in the sysvol. Uh, in an XML file in the sysfall share, and you could just decrypt it, which is awesome. And we can leverage that to move laterally or even uh, just privilege, uh, escalate privileges in a domain. Mitigation to this is to install uh, the patch and delete existing group policy preference XML files in the sysfall share. Uh, and just don't put passwords in files that everyone can access. That's just a general rule of thumb, I guess. Um, this can be easy moderate depending on how your report is written, because unfortunately, um, it's not enough to just apply the patch. You, ask, you have to actually go into the sysfall share and manually delete the XML files. And unfortunately, a lot of people, when I see reports, a lot of people don't actually put the full path to the XML file in the sysfall share. So when the, when the blue team or system administrators try to actually go back and delete them, they have to manually do it. And sometimes if they manually have to find those XML files, they just don't do it for some reason. That's just something to keep in mind. And usually it doesn't break stuff, so that's good. Dumping credentials, maybe cats. Uh, we all dump credentials in one way or another. Uh, Windows stores domain credentials in memory, specifically in the LSS process, and we could just dump those credentials via maybe cats or another tool, whichever you prefer. PowerSplay comes with a handy dandy invoke maybe cats feature, uh, invoke maybe cats script that uh, you can use to directly inject maybe cats in memory and dump credentials through there. Mitigation. Uh, well, you can't perform this attack on Windows 2012 R2 uh, Plus or Windows 8.1 Plus. You should install that patch uh, for older systems and set that registry key everywhere. Uh, and you can actually monitor that registry key because there really is no reason for that registry key to change value uh, other than it, even if it's not a malicious attack, really. Uh, so the attackers know about this trick. So if you change that registry key back to the value of one, Windows will store passwords in memory again even though uh, you apply that patch. So that's just something to keep in mind. And also your administrators should really have a separate workstation for their administrator activities as opposed to having the same machine for going to Facebook and performing the administrator activities as well. So this is easy, to, pretty easy to mitigate. Um, and it might break stuff depending if you have applications that require accessing the LSS process space. Lateral movement. Local administrator accounts. Uh, don't do that. That's actually a screenshot from a live client environment where they just made everyone local administrator. It's awesome. 
the uh, development, local administrator, domain admins, domain users, why not? IMP, Infotech, man, admin, yeah, everyone's, everyone's local administrator, why not? It's awesome. Uh, that, that was a, that was a really quick pen test. Uh, <laughs> so everyone, everyone here gets domain admin. Uh, it's great. Uh, and you can just, you just go around the network and pop boxes. It was awesome. Mitigation. Microsoft Labs. It's free. It's awesome. It works. Just remember to, uh, configure it correctly because if you don't, everyone can just access every password on every machine through, because it stores the password in Active Directory objects. So if you misconfigure it and make it readable, uh, everyone can just access those passwords. So, we have all of these attack primitives, uh, and just all of these misconfigurations that we see in every environment. And the goal here is just to automate everything and to make it as easy as possible to get that domain admin access. So initially when I was thinking about how to actually automate this whole process, I, I was thinking of just autom uh, just writing something from scratch. Uh, but then I just got thinking and I said, well, Empire, it, it's awesome. Uh, and it has all of these modules that basically by themselves do everything that I want it, that I want this script to do. So we have the situational awareness modules, uh, the get group member, excuse me, get domain controller, user hunter find local admin access, get GPO computer, get logged on. These are every, these are the primitives that we need to acquire all the information to automate this entire process. This is all the information that we need to uh, find where the domain admins are logged, uh, are logged on, who domain admins actually are, where the domain controller is at, um, find local admin access. So, for example, if we inject into a process, we can then use that security context to see if uh, that user has other um, boxes it can access. Get GPO computer so we can resolve the GUIDs of uh, the uh, group policy objects that we pull down from the syswell share, which, which we'll get into a bit. Uh, get logged on to see who's logged on, and et cetera, et cetera. And again, these are just all of, so all of the, all of this functionality was already built in Empire. So when, when I just, when I was initially trying to come up with a way to actually automate this whole thing, um, it, Empire was just a choice. And thankfully it has a RESTful API, so we can automate the entire process. So this is the flow graph of how Death Star actually work, and I apologize if this is slow, uh, if this is small, uh, but I'll be posting the slides online, so if you want to look at it later, uh, you can do that. So basically, at the start, Death Star checks the Empire credential database to see if we actually have uh, the domain admin credentials in the database. We then see if we have any agents that are currently running that are under, the, that are using the domain admin context. If there are no agents, it checks to see if there is a new agent. And if there is, it will basically start gathering information on the domain. So, uh, if where the DC is at, where my domain admin's at. So, get net domain controller for the domain controllers, get net group member to gather that list of domain admin members. Uh, this has actually changed recently because it actually, because there are other uh, languages except English, the way it does it now is it resolves the domain SID and just appends 512 to it so that it will just get the um, domain admins group members without relying on the actual name called domain admins. Oops. Well, that, I, that's unfortunate, but not really unfortunate. <laughs> uh, kind of happy that actually, that happened actually. All right. Uh, invoke user hunter. <laughs> uh, invoke user hunter. Uh, again, uh, it finds those uh, domain admins, which is awesome. It does everything automatically. And it has the host and session from fields of the output to the priority targets. And this is a way of just prioritizing those boxes where the domain admins are actually logged on to, which we can then uh, try to compromise with further, once we gather further information on the domain or we start moving laterally. So once we have that situational awareness uh, initially, we then uh, use the get, get net logged on function. Uh, to see if anyone is logged in locally or remotely, and if so, uh, any of the domain admins are logged on locally or remotely, and if so, we add those to the priority targets. We then try to attempt domain privilege escalation. Again, I'm not even trying to Kerberos, like this is just plain old group policy preferences, uh, the passwords in group policy preference XML files, so we use the get GPP password module in Empire. We then uh, parse the GUID of that group policy object to resolve through GPO correlation which computers that GPO is applied to. And then we use invoke WMI, and this is where the lateral movement starts. So we start spreading out through a network using that local administrator account that we decrypted 
uh, from that XML file. We then uh, start seeing if any of the agents that returned, uh, that we got back from the lateral movement and, and, and any other techniques that we run are running in a high integrity context. So that means we're local administrator on the machine. If we are local administrator on the machine, we start enumerating the running processes. Um, and if there are any processes that are running on the different users, we inject into those processes using PS inject. Uh, and this is just a really handy way to basically inject into a process and start using that, uh, the user's uh, security context to see if that user has local admin access on other machines. If the operating system is Windows 10, we just run Mimikatz to see if there are any interesting credentials in memory. Uh, and then, since we, uh, it's not, not necessarily all users are going to be logged into all machines, any of the credentials that we get from Mimikatz, we spawn additional agents on some of the machines that we already compromised to use uh, their credentials and again start moving laterally to see if we can compromise any additional machines. So this is basically, what it essentially is trying to emulate is a worm. So it just tries to straight up compromise the entire domain uh, until it eventually finds a domain, a computer with a domain admin logged into it. And of course, uh, from the output that we got from Invoke User Hunter, it's, it does prioritize those machines first. So in case we do have a domain admin that's actually logged in, it will try to compromise those boxes first as opposed to the entire domain, and then it will stop. If we don't have, uh, if, we're, if we don't have an agent that is running under a high integrity context, it will then just attempt to elevate uh, using a UAC bypass. So in this case, uh, Death Star currently just uses the bypass event viewer module, which is a uh, UAC bypass discovered by Matt Nelson, which uses the event viewer, and it's completely fileless. It just sets a register key, if I recall correctly, which is awesome. Uh, so that's basically uh, how it works. Demo time. So I was going to do a live demo, but then at the last moment I thought that would probably not be a good idea. Uh, so I got, I have videos. So these are on YouTube, uh, in case, do I, no, I do not want to play back where I left off. Thank you very much. Uh, okay, perfect. So in case it is too small, they're on YouTube, um, and you could just type that star. It should be like the third or fourth thing that comes up. But, uh, what we're doing here is we're first generating a launcher with Empire. We're going uh, on our machine, on our Windows machine here. We're just verifying that we're running under a domain user. So we're running under a domain user currently. We're pasting in our PowerShell launcher so that we get a, uh, we get an initial agent for that start to do its thing. Initial agent call back. So now we have, we have a foothold in the environment. So now we go over to Death Star and uh, we fire up the Python script. So the first, the first line of output here is it, uh, it finds the, uh, the new agent connected and it starts performing situational awareness. So it's, it found the two members of the domain admins group in this case, administrator and God, two accounts that were part of the domain admins group. Found the two domain controllers. And now it's going to start uh, performing user hunting to find where those domain admins are logged into. So there are four local uh, admins. There are four active admin sessions. found one user logged into localhost, and what it's now going to do, it's going to start lateral movement and the domain privilege escalation, and it's going to attempt to elevate to a high integrity context using the event viewer bypass that we talked about before. It connected, it, it, it uh, executed the uh, get GPP password module, and now it's going to parse those credentials and resolve the GUIDs of that group policy object to those computers, and uh, from the output here it sees that it's applied to six computers, and then it starts moving laterally throughout the domain. So you can see here from the output, uh, there's a new agent that's being connected 
and we see that we just keep getting agents in Empire. So this is just Empire automatically performing lateral movement throughout the domain. So it basically compromised all the machines in the lab environment at this point, and it found that there's a domain admin logged into one of the machines that it, um, from one of the agents that it compromised. It's enumerating the local processes and it's PS injecting into all the processes and it's continuing to perform lateral movement. And this can take a while. It can take as long as Bloodhound, basically, uh, essentially because it's performing the same operations that, almost the same operations that Bloodhound does, only on a slightly smaller scale. And there we go. So we have, we've gotten domain admin, uh, with, uh, by basically PS injecting into a process that has, uh, the same context, then the same context as a domain admin. And at that point, it just shuts down. And from the rest of the video, you can see that we have an agent running as domain admin. And just to prove that I'm not lying to you, I guess I decide to interact with it and just do a who am I. Perfect. So I don't know if you can see that, but uh, basically we're running on a domain admin context. So that was just gaining domain admin uh, without using Mimikatz. So that was just by abusing local admin relationships. If we add Mimikatz into the mix, it becomes a whole different story, which is another one, which is another video that I have here real quick. So again, we generate the PowerShell launcher. I'm just going to skip ahead here. Paste in the PowerShell launcher. There we go. We have the initial agent. We run Death Star. And this time, instead of only abusing local admin relationships, we are going to be injecting, we're going to be using Mimikatz as well to dump credentials. And it's going to be spawning additional agents using those dump credentials. Performing recon, it's the same environment, so I'm just going to move here. And also, I think we're a little bit, well, we're doing good on time. So it's already starting to spread laterally. It's PS injecting into the processes that are running under different users. And it's executing Mimikatz as well in the background. So this time it's spawning additional agents using those dumped credentials. At this point, it found a logged in domain admin. It's going to dump those credentials from memory. And you can see here that it got domain admin uh, via credentials this time as opposed to just uh, via the security context. So you can see here it has on the screen, it's a username and password, and it has the domain admin credentials. So, we can see this is entirely possible to automate the whole process really in 90% of your average Active Directory environments going from domain user to domain admin. So, if you're familiar with a lot of the events that happened recently, this should sort of sound familiar to you. Uh, a program that automates lateral movement, uh, it uses, uh, uses some of the lateral movement functionality to infect an entire Active Directory domain. It was sort of a coincidence that I wrote, a I wrote this blog post in, uh, in 29th of May. And I did make a point in the blog post that it would be interesting because I just, this was basically, this is like a 200 line Python script. It's nothing fancy really. Um, and I said that it would be interesting to see because if I can do this, I wonder what nation states could do. Like, it, it's entirely possible that nation states would have this capability if not something much more sophisticated. Well, just so happens, three weeks later, not Petya is a thing, uh, and it basically uses the same concept where it dumps credentials, starts moving laterally automatically throughout an entire Active Directory environment, only that in this case it actually uh, just 
completely wipes computers instead of just dumping credentials, which is sort of not what we want to do. Another thing I like to point out is that I'm not the only one that thought of this, obviously. Um, another, this is basically, it's the same concept, only using a different implementation. Uh, Tal Moore from, again, from the ATA Microsoft group. Uh, he's an awesome guy. I met him at Black Hat this year. And um, he basically wrote GoFetch. GoFetch is the same thing, the Death Star is basically the same thing, only that it uses Bloodhound instead of Empire. And it automates the entire process of, again, going from that domain user to domain admin. It uses PS exec for lateral movement, if I recall correctly, instead of WMI, so it's a little bit less stealthier. Uh, but it is the same concept, really. And finally, uh, these are people you should probably follow. Uh, they're all awesome. Uh, they're really pushing the industry forward. Uh, these, are good, these are the guys that are really driving the Active Directory industry at this point. Uh, so you should all, fo all follow them. Questions? I think that's it. No, it, that's just, uh, it, it attempts to decrypt those passwords in Sysfall, but if it, there, there aren't those XML files, you c it can, ma it could just get a domain admin via a lateral movement, so like in uh, local admin relationships or just credentials, really.